Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. On today's video, we're going to discuss five tips to survive having a massive Julie Shetty dog in your home. Before we get started on this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this. Don't forget to comment down below. I do take all of your comments and suggestions for videos very seriously. So you might just end up seeing one of your video suggestions up here on our channel. Let's get started. Um, I'm particularly excited about this video because I think it's going to be very helpful for a lot of um, Corso owners. I came from a Hispanic household in which cleaning is taken very, very seriously. If possible, everything should just be bleached and spotless and clean and shining and beautiful. And when I got Dante, this massive 120 pound dog, that drools everywhere, that when he shakes his head, the drool literally like just flies into the ceiling. That for me was a game changer. <laughs> I have never come across such a challenge in my life. <laughs> I had dogs before, but having a big dog like Dante was just a whole different experience overall. And I had to learn a lot of things on my own because I feel like this is a topic that people don't really discuss or maybe people aren't very interested in. When you think about a Connie kind of Corsi, you think about this big massive dog, how you train, how you do obedience, how do you exercise this dog. But the reality is that this dog, if you have one, lives with you and you have to know how to deal with this dog being in your house. I thought that this video was going to be interesting and helpful for you guys and yeah, I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Tip number one. Just come to the acceptance that your dog will shed, your dog will drool a lot. There are going to be a lot of accidents while potty training. There may be an accident when they're full grown and I'm telling you, Honey Corso pee at this age is just a lot it, it's literally like a river an ocean on your floor of pee like you can put as many paper towels your hands are gonna get wet it's disgusting it's horrible <laughs> so yes there are going to be moments you just have to come to the acceptance that there are going to be moments like this and that you have this dog and there are things that come along with having this dog so yeah for those of you wondering if, why Dante has an accident at the age that he is a, a, a two-year-old, he's actually very immature. Sometimes he's playing with Peach so hard that he's just like almost like a little kid. They're playing, 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 and like he last minute needs to pee, he rings the bell to go outside, and if I don't get there in time, he might have an accident. So it only happened like once or twice, but I'm telling you, it's enough. Tip number two, set yourself up for success. For example, when Peach came in, I knew that potty training is going to be rough for the first couple of weeks. So I set myself up for success by removing anything that would make it harder for me to keep up with potty training. For example, I have this really nice jute rug that I'm sitting on. When Peach was here, jute rug went to the dining room where she has no access to because I knew that she was going to pee and if she peed on the rug, that would have been really, really hard to clean up after, it would have been smelling, it would have been awful. So, I set myself up for success by removing the things that would make it harder for me to go through with potty training. So that's an example of something that I did. Also, set yourself up by success. Get good products, good quality products that are going to help you keep up with cleaning if there are accidents, which there inevitably will be. For example, enzyme cleaner. I've mentioned this before on other videos. I swear by it, it's the only, only, only thing that really gets rid of the pee scent. Dry pee, wet pee, anything. It really gets rid of any odor, any accident, poop. It's amazing. You guys need to get this, <laughs> I'm telling you. You want your house to smell normal, you need to get enzyme cleaner for any accidents. Be on top of your puppy while potty training. I know it's tough, but just start to pick up on you know their behavior, their body language. Your puppy 
is naturally going to give you signs that they need to go to the bathroom because they don't really want to make a mess but they need guidance to know where they can make the mess as you guys know dogs they don't like to pee in the same place like if they have a little den or a little cage they don't like to pee in there they don't like to pee where their food is where their bed is so it's the same thing with your house so during potty training you just have to be really really on top of them um with peach what we would do is and dante right for them right after naps right after a really long nap their bladder is full and they need to go to the bathroom and what we would do is just pick them up and put them outside and boom pee congratulate them everything is fine and dandy they do this little thing that they like go in circles that's another sign another sign that your dog needs to go to the bathroom you take them outside in that moment too so you just have to re be really really on top of them and that is going to pay off later on and ensuring to keep your house nice and tidy and clean. Tip number three, keep your dog clean. So this means you have to have some kind of upkeep with their hygiene. Make sure you give them a shower every other week. In the weeks that you don't give them a shower, you can pass a wipe around them. Clean their paws after they come back from outside. Have a little rug on the door that they usually go, come in and out from so that they can clean their paws because a lot of odor and stuff gets trapped in their paws. They have huge ginormous paws. So you know, giving them a helping hand by cleaning their paws, training them how to do that since they're little is really, really going to help you in the long run. Brush their hair as needed. Corsos, they're not gonna shed like a husky, but they do shed. And when they are changing their coat, they especially shed. So have some kind of little routine with your dog. Make sure to brush their hair every other week, once a week, however many times you need to. It's gonna help you overall with the cleanup um, so that fur doesn't accumulate on your sofa, on other people's clothes, on the floor. All of that stuff is gonna really help. So keep up with your dog's grooming routine. You also keep your dog clean by keeping their toys clean, by keeping the things that they sleep on clean. So if they have a blanket or um, anything that they really like, you have to you know, try to clean that at least once a week. What I do is I take um, Dante's blankets or Peach's blankets, even their toys, like toys like this that they get their drool on, all fabulously on this tug. It starts smelling like dog, which isn't wrong, but you don't want to get it to a point that it's like really like taking over your house with that smell. So you clean their toys as well. You clean their blankets, you clean um, anything that they're on. Moving on to tip number four. This could might not apply to everybody, but if you allow your dog on the couch, keep some kind of blanket over it. Um, what I do, this is, I used to have this couch exposed, um, but now after having two dogs, um, Dante and Peach together combined, they drool a lot. They like to have their bones on the couch too, so more droolage in that situation. And it was just getting like not easy to have to scrub my couch all the time. So what I do now, and what I did for, but I, I don't know why it took me so long to apply this on this couch. Um, what I do for other places that they lay down on is I ha keep some kind of um, blanket or some kind of, this is actually drop cloth. I'll put it on the link in the description below. It's like really good um, material for this kind of stuff because it's like nice and sturdy and easily washes, um, washes easily. So I put this on top that way I don't have to scrub the actual couch. I can just take this off once a week, twice a week, and put this in the washer with bleach. <laughs> and um, it comes out perfectly, it comes out smelling great. Make choices that are going to help you not get cranky. So I know you might really like that couch or I know you might really like that rug in your living room, but it's not worth you getting a headache or getting angry at your dog for being a dog and wanting to chew his bone on it. So it's just better for you to do something like this. Now our last tip, tip number five, this is actually something that one of you guys suggested to me. So before I was like Cinderella, like scrubbing the walls with like a rag and vinegar, which works, but it gets really hard to do <laughs> after some time. Um, and I would be scrubbing the walls because as I mentioned before, Dante's drool is like, when he shakes his head, it splatters everywhere. You need to go outside, girl. What a good girl. Let me tell you about how you go to the bathroom, girl. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so I was talking about the drool and how I was dealing with the drool before. 
one of you guys suggested, I don't know why I never thought about this before, but you guys suggested getting Mr. Clean Magic Eraser and using that to clean the walls. And you guys, I'm telling you, it's literally magic. Like, it's amazing. It changed my life. It got me so excited to paint way more things white because before I was feeling a little bit like, man, it's gonna be so hard to keep up with cleaning Dante's Rule if I paint something white because it's gonna be so noticeable. But after getting the magic eraser, it's awesome. You don't even have to put in a lot of like elbow grease. You literally just go like this and everything comes off. I know that some of you guys, maybe with kids, have used this for like scribbles and stuff on the walls, but you guys, for those dog moms, this stuff is magical. This stuff is magical. You guys need to get it. I'll put a link in the description for that as well. And I'm going to especially thank the subscriber who suggested this because you've changed my life. <laughs> so yeah, so those are my five tips for surviving having a massive drooly dog in your house or two. Please share things that you have done in your house to keep it nice and orderly in the comments below. I love to hear from you guys. I take a lot of your advice as well. So please, please, please feel free to comment down below. Let me know what you guys do to keep your home clean um, because we love our pets, right? We love our pets, but we need to keep our house clean for when people come over, when your mother-in-law comes over, it's a serious thing. And I guess to just give myself a little bit of props here, all of these things have worked so well that Anytime my mom comes over or my mother-in-law and they give me the like, okay, I know that this is working. They, they usually give the initial sniff in the house every time they come over. Um, Cause I always ask them, does, my house sm does the house smell like dog? So I remember specifically the day they said, no, it doesn't. And it's the day that I followed all of these tips here. So that should give you guys a little more incentive. <laughs> so yeah, so thank you so much for watching. See you guys next week. Bye. <laughs>